the psalmist said in Psalm 104 verse 24, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. period began about 190 million years ago and lasted approximately 60 million years. It is named after the Jura Mountains of France and Switzerland where fossilized rocks of this period were first studied in 1795. As the climate became tropical and humid again, swamps, lakes and streams replaced hot, dry deserts. Thick forest and lush vegetation contributed notably to the growth of animal life. A great variety of reptiles developed, some to gigantic proportions. Two main groups of dinosaurs, the Sauriscians, that is, lizard hips, and Ornithischians, that is, the bed hips, continued to develop at this time. Some were huge and fed on plants, while others were small and ate meat. The Jurassic period is most famous for the dinosaurs that invaded all environments, both the deserts, the forests, the swamps, the seas, and even the skies. The plants that predominated in the Jurassic period had already appeared during the Triassic, growing in more favorable climatic conditions, conifers, cycads, and ginkgos spread across the world. The Cycadioidae for example, resembled a low palm tree with a short stubby trunk. This is the trunk, you see it's short but stubby. That was so colorful that it looked as though it had been decorated with colored leaf-like flowers. The Cycadioide, however, was neither a palm tree nor a flowering plant. These plants were so prevalent during the Jurassic period that some biologists believe it became the age of the cycads. Flowering plants and hardwood trees did not yet exist during this time. The seas continued to be populated by echinoderms, pelicipods, gastropods, foraminifers, bryozoans. As in the previous period, ammonoids and reef building corals continued to be numerous. The Ija was a common shrimp like arthropod of the Jurassic period. It had 10 legs and an antenna. During this period, the four limbs of climbing lizards slowly evolved into wings and reptiles took to the skies in great numbers. These interesting creatures looked like small lizards with huge wings and were named pterosaurs, which means winged lizards. With bat-like wings that did not fold back easily, flying reptiles were probably too clumsy to survive life on the ground. It is thought that they lived high up on cliffs where it was relatively safe from predators and easy to take off into the air. The eyes of these creatures were quite large, suggesting that they depended on their sight for survival. They probably glided out over the water in search of fish or small sea animals. Swooping down to the water, they scooped up their prey between long, sharp teeth. Fly reptiles had their share of difficulties. Their thin, leather-like wings tore easily or sometimes got caught. If they were forced to land in the water, they would not be able to take off again. They either drowned or were preyed upon by sea reptiles. If they had to climb on the ground, it was almost impossible to climb back up to a higher place without first being attacked by a dinosaur or some other predator. Pterodactylus is the oldest known flying reptile. This animal had hollow bones like those of a bird. However, its method of flying was quite primitive. It mostly glided and probably only short distances at that. Scientists were surprised to find that the wings of this creature were composed of bones resembling an arm, a wrist, and one very long finger. It was as if the four limbs, especially the finger, had been stretched and stretched and stretched. It is easy to see why this animal was given the name Pterodactylus, which means wing finger. This creature was also in the evolutionary process of losing its many slender teeth. Some were already missing from the back of its jaws. 
Eventually, a beak evolved. Many fossilized skeletons of these creatures had been found where they once had been buried in the mud under the sea. The Ramphorhynchus was another primitive flying reptile with a large wingspan. It had a long slender tail with a flap of skin on the end which was used for staring in flight. Since the hollow bones of birds do not fossilize easily, there was little information available about the development of these animals prior to the discovery of the Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx in Germany, which was found in the 19th century. Imagine the excitement when a complete skeleton of the very first bird was discovered. Unlike present day birds, Archaeopteryx had teeth, a long bony tail, and solid bones. It was so well preserved that one could see the fine details of the feathers. What made it even more exciting was that it was a flawless evolutionary link between reptiles and birds. Archaeopteryx was very much like a lizard covered with feathers. So when you look at it without the feathers, it actually does look like a lizard. But it had feathers which made it a bird. It was about the size of a crow with a wing spring measuring two feet. On each wing were three fingers with claws perhaps used for climbing trees. Its chest muscles were too weak for it to have been much of a flyer. It probably glided out over the water in search of food like the flying reptiles. The Ichthyosaurus was an aquatic reptile of the Jurassic Seas. It resembled a porpoise with its flippers, fish-like tail, and dorsal fin. Is that the flippers? The fish-like tail and the dorsal fin. It measured 24 inches in length, had no gills, and breathed air through its nostrils. Ichthyosaurus never ventured on land even to lay eggs. Instead, it hatched its eggs internally and gave life breath to its young in the water. For an animal to adopt a life on land is a complex feat. For one thing, it is much more difficult for an animal to support its own weight on land than it is to support it in water. Also, environmental changes affect an animal much more on land. Drought, snow, ice, wind, and cold are serious problems for a land animal. Even the availability of food varies much more on land than in water. An animal that can adapt to harsh living conditions on land is better prepared for life in the sea than an animal that has never lived on land. The Plesiosaurus are examples of reptiles that once lived on land and successfully returned to the sea. These marine reptiles lived alongside the Ichthyosaurus and sea turtles of the Jurassic period. Although these creatures hardly resembled lizards at all, the name means more like a lizard. So, Plesiosaurus means more like a lizard. Rather than looking like a lizard, it had long snake-like legs and small heads with sharp teeth these reptiles hunted fish and other sea creatures. They had large paddle-like flippers that they used like oars to row forward and perhaps even backward. Scientists think that they may have lived much more like our present day seals. It is possible that plesiosaurs laid their eggs on land but a nest has never been found. Some of these reptiles grew anywhere from 10 to 20 feet in length, most of which was made up of neck and tail. Many complete skeletons of these animals have been found in Britain. Plesiosaurus was a good representative of a marine reptile of this time. A common armored dinosaur of this time was the Stegosaurus, whose name means plate lizard. Although it was well protected with bony plates all along its humped back, these are the bony plates, all along its humped back, its sides were unprotected and vulnerable to the vicious jaws of carnivorous dinosaurs that also lived at that time. This creature, measuring 20 feet in length, had a small head and weak jaws designed for a herbivorous diet. Its spiked tail, that's the tail with the spikes, was commanded by a second brain, which was really not a brain, but an automatic reflex controlled by its hind legs. 
The second brain actually weighed 20 times as much as the brain in its head. <laughs> The fossilized remains of Brachiosaurus have been found in Eastern Africa and North America. An animal sauropod measuring 80 feet in length, Brachiosaurus could stretch its neck to reach 40 feet in the air. This reptile was the heaviest dinosaur ever to live on Earth, weighing 85 tons. Its tiny brain, even as big as it was, however, weighed only 7 ounces. So can we call it a big for nothing? A plant eater? This animal spent most of its life foraging for food to keep its huge stomach full. So all the Brachiosaurus did in its time on Earth was to look for food to feed its large stomach. Over millions and millions of years of evolution, reptiles ultimately became more and more mammal-like. However, a true link between reptiles and mammals has never been found. Unfortunately, skeletal fragments of early mammals consist mainly of teeth and jaws since the bones of these small creatures did not fossilize easily. By carefully studying these remains, scientists have been able to determine if an ancient animal was a reptile or a mammal. All animals that have hair, warm blood, and glands with milk for nourishing their young are called mammals. Most all give birth to live young instead of laying eggs, although it is possible that mammals evolved from one common ancestor, some scientists think that they may have evolved from different groups. The Morgancodon is the earliest known mammal. A small rat-like creature, it's probably survived on dinosaur eggs, insects, and other small invertebrates. So this was the first mammal. And that is the end of the Jurassic period of the Mesozoic era. In our next period, we'll be moving on to the next period of the Mesozoic era, which is the Cretaceous period.